So welcome again to chair-based exercise for mobility and for strength. Um, I've got some equipment with us today, so you may decide to join me in using the equipment, or you may decide that you don't want to, and that's absolutely fine. So I have a very soft ball, very squishy ball. A cushion will do the job as well. You don't need to find a ball, that's a specialist piece of equipment, but a soft cushion that maybe you can pop between your knees and we'll be doing some knee squeezes with today. So cushions work well. I also have two cans of soup. I better not say what brand it is, but two cans of soup um, or anything else you found. You may have wrist weights that you use at home anyway, or any, anything else, they could be blocks um, of wood, doesn't have to weigh a lot. These probably no weigh more than about a pound each, a pound maybe, maybe a kilo. So I don't want you using anything more than that. Um, we're not here to build you know, huge, great biceps and triceps and strong muscles. We're here to like, just to train the muscles back into general way to stay work. So I'll keep those and we'll come back to those in a few moments. So let's start off with this session and just taking a moment to arrive into our Pilates posture. So just checking down to make sure your feet are hip distance apart. You might wonder why we do this. It's to keep good alignment throughout the whole of your body without putting undue stress on the body. So feet hip distance apart, your knees are also hip distance apart because your knees track down over towards your feet. And if your knees are hip distance apart, it means that your hips are in line with your knees. Coming on up the body, then your shoulders are stacked directly over your hips because you're sitting tall. So we're not slumping forward. We're not overstretching and sitting back in our chairs. We're sitting upright, just as though someone's got hold of this by a strand of hair pulling us up towards the ceiling. So you're lengthening through your back. So with your legs nicely at right angles to your body, sitting tall, hands down by your side, you can always just touch the side of your chair if you want to, and shuffling forward on your chair, so you're about halfway forward, just turning sideways, so you're not, this is the back of the chair, not right at the back, you're not tipping off the front, but just so the edge of the chair is coming halfway into the back of your thighs. That gives you the maximum possibility of sitting up tall. So as you sit up tall, pull your shoulder blades back and down, feel the shoulders dropping. So you're trying to lengthen distance between your earlobes and the tops of your shoulders. So not being hunched and not having your head forward. Sitting tall, pulling your tummy right in. So see how far you can pull it in to start with. Keep pulling in, pulling in, it's hard work. And then release everything down again. You feel your body sag and then start to tighten up through your tummy again, pulling your belly button back towards your spine, so someone's just got a needle and they're threading and pulling you through, and then release everything down again. You probably see my body going into, ooh, and then relax. And again, pulling in, not so far this time, just as a gentle level of engagement. You're aware that something's happening here, doesn't have to be a lot. Still with the tummy pulled in, just tuck your chin under a fraction, and you're ready for the off. So we're just going to do a couple of deep breaths to start with. So take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Another breath in. As you breathe out, take a moment to close your eyes. Take another deep breath in. And breathing out through your mouth, listen to your breath. Another breath in. And breathing out. And once more, breath in. As you breathe out, just open your eyes, look towards the front, or to, out in front of you, and just notice, hopefully, an element of calmness come over your body. We'll also do some breathing at the end of today's session. So we're going to come into some head moves today, some stretching neck moves. So we're just moving our head from side to side, and up and down, and round in circles. We're going to encourage it with our arms. We'll start off gently from side to side. Take a breath in, look to the right. And as you breathe out, swing your head looking towards the left. Another breath in, look towards the right. And breathing out, look towards the left. And again, breath in, look towards the right. And breathing out, look towards the left. Bring your head all the way back to centre. Just allow your right ear to drop to your right shoulder and hold it there. You might feel the stretch start to develop down the left side of your neck. Float your right hand up and place it on the left side of your head and very gently pull the neck a little bit further. Now working within your range of movement as always, I didn't say that at the start. 
but only going as far as you feel comfortable. And as you pull the head very slowly, the neck muscles relax a little bit more, still having the focus of pulling your left shoulder away from you. Keeping your head here, release your hand, and then slowly bring your head all the way back to centre. It might feel a little bit strange. Just take the head over to the left. It might not go as far as it did on the other side, because we haven't increased the stretch yet. So just feel the start of the stretch from underneath your ear, coming down your shoulder to the outside edge of your right shoulder. Float your left hand up, just place on the side of your head, and then very gently ease down a little bit more. It may not go too much further, might just be a centimetre or so, it's enough just to get extra stretch. And because we're doing it slowly, your muscles are prepared for it. They're not going into shock, saying, oh, what's she doing? She's pulling your head off. Um, so we'll stop and we'll tighten. They realise there's an element of safety here. And then keep your head here, release your hand down by your side, bring your head back to centre. Take a breath in, look up, and as you breathe out, chin towards your chest. And again, breath in, look up, and breathing out, chin towards your chest. And last one, breathing in, look up. And this time, chin towards your chest and just hold it there. Start to feel a bit more of a stretch down the back of your neck, back of your back. If you can, float both hands up, place them behind your head and just tilt your chin forward a fraction more so you can get close to your chest. Still pulling your tummy in while you're looking down. You can see whether you're pulling your tummy in or not. And keep your head here, release both hands down by your side, and then slowly lift your head all the way back up. And just coming into some very gentle shoulder shrugs. So lift your shoulders up, and then slide your shoulder blades back down your back again. And lift all the way up, and take them all the way back down again. So they're almost like shoulder circles, but not quite. It's more of a lift, and then a place back down again. And lift, you're using your neck muscles and then place them back down again, stretching across the front of your chest. And again, three more, lift, and slowly lower all the way back down. And lift, and all the way back down. Last one, and lift, and all the way back down. Reaching round if you're using it for ball, cushion, whatever it is you've got in front of you. Keep your elbows in towards your side, and you're holding your cushion, ball, I'll just call it your object. Um, firmly within your hands. And all we're going to be doing is imagine you're passing the ball to someone in front of you. So take a breath in and as you breathe out, stretch forward and then come back again. And stretch forward and come back again. So from the side, stretch forward and all the way back. So your back stays straight, you're not leaning into the movement. If your tummy is still pulled in, Back still very straight, you're swinging from your shoulder joints and sliding the ball out in front and straightening up through your elbows, feeling the muscles in your arms start to tighten as you pass the ball to me and then I'll take it back again. And I'll pass it to you and you take it back from me. Good game this, isn't it? And out in front and back and out in front and back and out in front and back. Three more, stretch and pull back and stretch and pull back. And last one, stretch and pull back. I'm just gonna place the ball between my knees. You can pop your cushion there if you want to. I'm reaching round for the weights. And again, if you don't want to use weights, then by all means, don't worry about it. We're gonna be doing the same sort of movement with the weights in our hands now. So I want you to have your elbows in towards your waist and have your palms facing down with the weights in them. That's a slightly more advanced version. If that's too difficult for you, have the weights placed in the palm of your hand and you'll be extending your arm out one at a time. But if you do have the ability in your hands, it's not too much um, arthritis going on, so you can grip, you'll be using through your wrists and the back of your arms in a, um, far more strongly in this position. So keep your elbows in towards your side, shoulders back and down, pull your tummy in. Take a breath in and as you breathe out, extend your right arm. Breathing in, pull it back. We're staying with the right arm and take it out and pull it back and take it out and pull it back and out. We're going to swap over to the left arm now and out and back 
and out and back and out and back last one out and back take your arms down by your side it doesn't matter whether you've got the weights or not but if you have take a breath in and as you breathe out lift the arm out to the right and then lower back down again then your left arm out to the left and back down again so the weights just add this little bit of extra resistance for you strengthening through your shoulders strengthening through your arms if you're not using weights if you didn't have any to hand or you simply don't want to do it have your fists clenched and imagine weights in your arms there's plenty of research out there which shows that using perceived weight so imagined weight when you're doing exercise can still increase the strength of your muscles so as you're lifting out to the side pull your tummy in as you lift out you've got this weight that your tummy is having to support so your tummy needs to tighten if your rest of your body is staying in a firm posture looking good nice if you want to you can take it into double arm movement so lift both of them out to the side and lower all the way back down again and lift and lower and lift and lower and lift and lower so keep that going breathing in and breathing out and breathing in and breathing out breathing in and breathing out as always stop if you need to We've got four more of these to go working within your range of movement and within the capabilities of your own body two more to go so one arm might feel tired they might both feel tired and your last one and release down you just pop your weights down pop your soup down that's for lunch later um, or evening meal having your cushion or your ball now between your knees we're going to come in some gentle knee squeezes we're going to start to tighten up through the inner thighs so ideally you've all got something that you can play with if not you can put your fist in front and you can be squeezing on your fist or on your hands that's that's fine as well and if you don't want to do any of those you can squeeze the legs in without anything there and you're still going to engage through your inner thigh muscles i'm going to use the resistance ball keeping my hands down by the side you can hold onto the chair if you want shoulders back and down pull your tummy right in looking good like a soldier sitting in the chair Take a breath in as you breathe out, squeeze into the item and release, and squeeze, and release, and squeeze, and release. So breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, and in. So the inner thigh muscles are muscles we don't use very much. It's always the parts of our legs that we want to get stronger. We don't spend much time doing it and they're difficult muscles to find. So this is an exercise you could just sit and do quite happily outside this video. You sit working, you're working through your legs, you're getting some strength through your hips as well. So if you do have any hip issues, you might find after a while this becomes quite tiring. But over time, if you build it up by doing a set of these every day, you're going to get stronger and uh, the stronger your legs are, the stronger your hips are, the more easy it is, or the easier it is to walk, walk around. Four, and three, and two, and one. Now I'm going to keep this here because it keeps an element of tension on my legs. Um, if you find whatever you've got is slipping out, just take it out, leave it on the floor. We're going to come into some side bends now to start working down through our waists. Tummy and back will still be working keep your arms down by your side and there's an option halfway through to pick up the weights again so take a breath in as you breathe out slide your right hand down the side of the chair and then come all the way back up again and then take the left arm down and then come all the way back up again so it's a very gentle tick tocking from side to side you tighten your tummy to assist with the lift coming back up as you tighten you should almost have a sensation of floating back upright rather than your back doing all the work. We did this in the last session. So if you do find it difficult, again, don't go down quite so far. 
And if you do find it relatively easy and you want to add on, you can reach around for the weights that you're using and tip down with the weights in your hand. Just adds a little bit extra. But again, you're still using the muscles, whether you're using the weights or not. And making sure it's a tip top from side to side. So it's as though your body's within two panes of glass. You're not leaning forward and you're not leaning backwards. So back, your back might start to tell you it's doing some work, in which case just take the range of movement very much smaller. Any movement going from side to side, if it's slow and controlled, is going to start training these muscles up. And again, all part of the stabilization and your posture. Fabulous. Give a little gentle squeeze between your knees if you've got something there. And the last one over towards the left and just release. You can pop your weights down or pop them on a table nearby you if you want to. So I'm going to again then take this out from in front um, and we're going to bring it close to our chest. So it might be a cushion and it might be uh, a ball, whatever, elbows out to the side. So again from the side it looks like this. So from here Bring it a little bit higher so it's on the front of your chest. You're just looking over your chin. It's almost resting on it. Keep your elbows out to the side. Feet are hip distance apart. Pull your tummy in. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, just twist round to the right. Breath in, back to centre. And then breathing out, twist to the left. Breathing in, back to centre. And then push round to the right, back to centre. And then all the way to the left and back to centre keeping that going. So your head is staying in line with whatever it is in front of your chest. So if you haven't got anything in front of your chest, you can keep your hands clenched in front of your chest instead. That works. But we want to try and keep the neutral line through your neck. So as you twist, you don't take the head further round and look behind you. It's going to overstress through the neck. And this is for upper thoracic and mid back work. So again, a gentle twist from side to side. Keeping that going. You've got four more to each side. Twisting slowly, building the strength. And one, two more to each side. You nearly got off with the round then. Breathing out, twist. Breathing into center. Last one, breathing out and breathing out and then coming all the way back to centre. I'm just going to leave the ball run down by the side and a little wiggle through your body. So we're going to come into heel raises. We're going to do right, then left. We're going to alternate ones and we're going to do double ones today. So hands are down by your side. You again, just holding onto the edge of the chair if you want to, to keep your shoulder blades back and down. So heel raises. So breathing in, lift your right heel, breathing out lower and then breathing in, lift your left heel breathing out lower. So make it quite a forceful movement. You're trying to push the bridge of your foot as far, full, as far forward as you possibly can, get my words out in a minute, and that will stretch the front of your leg, or stretch down the front of your shin muscles. Occasionally you may go into cramp in your calf muscles doing this exercise. If that's happened, obviously stop, to see if you can stretch the foot out. A good stretch of calf um, cramp is to stretch your foot out and pull the toes in towards you. Keep alternating. Right and then a left. This time bring your right heel off and hold it. Now we're going to change it at the same time. So as you lower your right heel, the left heel comes off. And change. And change. And change. Change. And change. Good. Keep pulling your tummy in. Keep your shoulders back and down. Keep smiling, you never know. Someone might just look in through your window and wonder what you're doing. That's it, good. Really working through your ankles. So stay at whichever level's appropriate for you or this time keep your right foot up and bring your left heel up to match it and then lower both and lift both, lower both and lift both, lower both and lift, lower and lift. Don't worry too much about your breath at this point. If you can get into a breathing pattern, that's fine. 
Um, but if you find you're breathing too quickly and it's uncomfortable, I find you just carry on with your normal breath pattern. The important thing is to keep breathing though. And lift. So strengthening through the front of your thighs as you lift, just see if you can tighten your thighs as well. Really pushing through your ankles. And you've got four more to go. And three and two and one and lower both feet back down still maintaining posture sit tall take a breath in as you breathe out lift your right knee and lower and your left knee and lower again doesn't have to be this high and if you really struggle with this one because of any hip issues then come back and carry on with the heel lift so this is just taking it to the next level, but it's allowing your hip flexors, it's allowing your thighs to start working. Your tummy will be working as well, pulling against gravity, holding onto the side of the chair if it gives you support. Now, some of you won't be able to manage the next one because of hip issues, but if you can, you lift the leg, you just take it slightly to the side, bring it back to center and lower. So it's a lift, just open slightly, back to center, and lower, lift, take it to the side, back to center and lower. So if you're carrying on with either your heel lifts or the straightforward leg lifts, carry on. If you can let go of the arm of the chair and bring your hands to your hips, then all the better. So we're trying to keep your body upright and still without twisting. So as you take the legs aside, try to resist the temptation to turn the body. So everything stays still, so it really is a hip movement. Listen to your body, do what's available to you. And if everything else fails and you get really tired, come back to sit in your start posture and focus on sitting tall and sitting strong. And we've got one more to each side. So lift and sigh, back to center, and lower, lift and side, back to center and lower. Just put your hands onto your chair and just again give your body a little bit of a wiggle around, whatever feels comfortable. So we might have just created a little bit of compression in the lower backs doing that. So we're going to do something called round the world. Again, have your hands onto your thighs for a bit of support and we're just going to be turning in circles. So make sure there's a little bit of space behind you in your chair and again, work within your range of movement. So lean forward. And then take the movement slightly lean to the right, take a lean a little way backwards over to the left and then back round to the start position in the centre. And so you're doing this sort of circular movement with your body, trying to keep your body as straight as you can. So it might be very tiny movements, there might not be any leaning going on at all. But as you're doing this, your tummy is tight, you'll be working all the way around your different back muscles. Creaky chair again. And if you are feeling a bit more stable, you can start to lean into it and make the body circles a little bit bigger. So it really is your range of movement and listen to your body. I quite like the smaller ones. The smaller ones are very effective. And you're trying to draw a circle. So just imagine it's a felt tip pen on the top of your head and you're drawing a circle on your ceiling. So your body is quite stiff. Keeping the tummy pulled in. All the work's being done by this centre part. So imagine you've got a corset tied around your body and someone's tightened it up really tight, so you're holding everything in. And one more in this direction. Coming all the way back to centre. Just release. Take a deep breath in. And breathing out to release out. And we'll go in the opposite direction. So sitting tall, pulling your tummy in, take a tiny lean forward, and then take the movement round to the left, behind you, across to the right, and back in front. So just notice the difference between doing it this direction and doing it in the previous direction. Notice if there's any sticking points. Noticing if something feels slightly odd. So we all have imbalances in our bodies. And... Uh, it's about appreciating them, knowing where they are, trying to work both sides equally so your body stays strong and balanced on both sides. 
So it's just this gentle circling round. You must imagine you're stirring a vat of porridge. Quite a nice thought, actually. A little bit of um, golden syrup. Not very healthy, I know. I should probably have blueberries and all the rest of it, but uh, I do like a bit of porridge. So just turning through with the body circles. And you've got another three to go. So starting three and two and your last one coming all the way back to center sitting tall leaning forward taking your hands onto your knees take a breath in as you breathe out drop your chin towards your chest and just slowly curl yourself down you might want to bring your forearms down onto your knees and look down towards the floor you have your hands together in front of you and from here just arching through your back it's a bit like a cat cow but um, exercise but seated so as you breathe in lift your head look in front of you and have a little arch through your back as you breathe out drop your chin towards your chest just try and push up on your thighs stretching through your back i'll turn sideways so in case you're wondering what i'm doing so you're breathing in you're lifting your head and you're having a little arch through your back your tailbone sticking out as you breathe out drop your chin towards your chest arch your back pushing down through your knees sucking your belly in Breathing in, lift your head, and breathing out, again, arching through your back. So you're trying to release the compression that's in your lower back that gives lower back pain. Working at your own pace, you might find that you don't like cow, what's called cow, for example, lifting your head, but you really feel the stretch, and it feels good when you're in cat and you're curled over. In which case, hold cat, suck your belly right in, create more space, and then coming back, Every now and then release into the cow before coming back into cat and push up. Just keep that going for another couple. And your last one. And from there, place your hands on your thighs, walk your thigh, walk your thighs back in, walk your hands back in towards you and just settle back into your good posture. From here, we're just going to come into our glute squeezes that we've done in the previous session, which is just a tightening of your buttocks, the glute muscles, the bum muscles, just to start to work them. And if you've been practicing this, then it should start to get easier. So there's hardly any movement in my body, but we're just going to take the right one to start with. So we're going to squeeze and lower, squeeze and lower, and squeeze and lower. So you will find that the knee and the front of your thigh will engage as well. There'll be a little bit of tightening there. But take all your focus to your right side of your bottom, squeezing and releasing, squeeze and release. Just got five more to do, and four, and three, and two. And one, take it over onto the other side. So your left buttock, squeeze and lower. Squeeze and release. Squeeze and release. So this is a bit of an isolation. Again, you might have a stronger side. And it's all very well if we do both sets of muscles at the same time, then the heavy, stronger, the more dominant muscle will actually work more. And what I'm trying to do is isolate the muscles on each side. So they both become strong and three and two and one just do six of both together so tighten and lower just so you're going over a bump in the road and then lowering back down again growing an inch and back down again and four so you can really tighten and oh and hold and lower three more squeeze hold and lower squeeze hold and lower last one hold 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 just see if you can hold it a little bit longer squeeze if you've dropped come back up and release all the way down release your hands down by your side and let's just focus in on our breath to complete today's session so feet are hip distance apart knees are hip distance apart feel the length through your body stretching up towards the ceiling you have your hands on your lap if you want to or down by your side it doesn't matter but think about your shoulder blades back and down pull your tummy in chin is slightly tucked 
you want to close your eyes, by all means do so. You want to focus in on your breath, so you're sending your rib cage forward, sideways and backwards as you breathe in. So keep an element of tightness in your tummy. Take a deep breath in through your nose and release out through your mouth. Another breath in and breathing out through your mouth. Take another breath in, just slowing your breath down and breathing out. And breath in and release. And your last one, breath in and breathing out, open your eyes. Hopefully you'll feel a little bit calmer, a little bit stretched. Thank you very much for watching the video today and keep moving every day. Thank you, stay healthy, goodbye.